Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and today we're talking about curry, that oh-so-delicious flavor. Well, not really the food. We're talking about curried functions in JavaScript and how they can be oh-so-helpful in your code. Let's get started. Today we're talking about currying. Currying is named after a mathematician named Haskell B. Curry. And it's a concept from Lambda Calculus. Now don't let this freak you out. It will not be that complicated to understand. Currying takes a function that receives more than one parameter and it breaks it into a series of unary functions. That is, functions that only receive one parameter. And therefore a curried function only takes one parameter at a time. Let's look at a few examples. Here's our first example, and currying can look like this. I've got a function called build sandwich, and I'm passing in ingredient one, and then my build sandwich function returns another function, and this is just an anonymous function that receives ingredient two. And then this anonymous function returns another function, and it's an anonymous function that receives ingredient three. Finally, this last function just returns the template literal where we combine the ingredients for my sandwich. But what we've done is nested functions. One function is calling the next is calling the next. And so if we were to call this, we would call it instead of passing in the parameters all in one set of parentheses. First we call build sandwich and pass in the string bacon and then we pass in lettuce for the next function and then tomato for the next function. So this one big build sandwich function is really broken into three functions and each receives only one parameter. And so if we go ahead and log this to the console, and I'll save the file, you can see I get my bacon lettuce tomato sandwich. But we have curried this function because we're going from one function to the next and therefore we call it each time with just one parameter. Now this works, but all the nesting gets pretty ugly, especially if we get deeper. So let's refactor. And here I've got another function that's very similar. It's just called build Sammy instead of build sandwich. And I've changed the names of the parameters just a little bit to shorten them up. But you can see I'm passing ingredient one and that's a function, it's an arrow function. And then I go straight to ingredient two, another function, and then ingredient three, which is the third function. And really, this is wrapping here, but it could be all on one line. And it returns the template literal that builds my sandwich as well. And now I can set my Sammy equal to the build Sammy function. And how I'm going to have a turkey, cheese, and bread sandwich and then I can just log my Sammy to the console. And you can see I get my turkey, cheese, and bread sandwich. And this is more how you would see a function with functional programming. There tend to be more expressions instead of imperative step-by-step. -step. So this build Sammy is more like you would see something here. And we've got function call, function call, function call all in a row. But we can just pass in one part at a time. So we could call build Sammy with turkey and then wait till later to add the cheese and the bread. So let's look at some more examples. Here's another example of a function multiply that I've created. And this is our standard arrow function. I'm passing in X and Y parameters and then it just multiplies X times Y. Now here's a look at a curried version of multiply. And you can see the difference. It receives X and then that's a function in itself, and then it receives y in the next function, and then it multiplies x and y. So if we log to the console, the standard version, of course, we're going to get what you would expect. We get the number 6, and we've passed in the parameters 2 and 3. But if we call the curried multiply and just pass in the first parameter, let's see what we get. We get a function returned. And it's telling us what's still needed. We still need to pass in the Y parameter. And so now if we go ahead and call the curried multiply with the two separate parameters and we save, now we get the number six. So the function doesn't complete until it receives all parameters. Until then, it essentially tells you what it still needs. 
Now, let's look at this. We've got partially applied functions. And partially applied functions are a very common use of currying. So now I've set a variable times 10 equal to my curried multiply, and I've already passed in the first parameter. So it's partially applied. And now anytime I want to call times 10, well first let's look at times 10 by itself without a parameter, and you can see it's still the function needing the y parameter. So anytime I want to call times 10 now, I just pass in one number, like the number 8. And if we save this, you can see we get 80 in the console. So I essentially have a function times 10 that accepts one parameter, and whatever parameter I pass into it is going to be multiplied by 10. So this lets us create functions where we can then make custom functions from it. So we've taken the curried multiply and made a times 10, and it would be just as easy to take curried multiply and make a times 20 or times 15 or any other number we wanted to. Another example, we'll set this update lm text function as a curried function, and it receives an ID, and then that's an arrow function, and then it receives content, which is another arrow function, and then it uses a query selector to select the ID, and then it sets the text content, and this wraps, there's a dot right here, so we've selected the ID and then put dot text content equal to the content that's passed in in the second function here, or the second parameter of our curried function. So let's look at an example of this applied partially, and we can set an update header text equal to update lm text and pass in the first parameter, which is header. So if we have an ID of header, then we can select that with this function, and we'll only need to pass in the content then as we apply update header text. So if we look at the page over here, I've got a hello in the middle of the web page. If we come back to VS Code, and I save this because I've applied the header ID, and now we look at the web page, we've got hello Dave. And that's because we called the update header text function, which is partially applied already, to go ahead and select that header ID and then it changes the content. So these are just a couple of quick examples of partially applied functions. Another common use of currying is function composition. And I'd actually like to make a separate tutorial about composition, but I do want to show a few of the applications of it here. And what that does is allows calling small functions in a specific order. They don't necessarily have to be small, but it's best that they're small. You can see here I have an add customer curried function. It receives a function in as the parameter for the first function, and the second parameter for the second function is the args. And here we're using the spread operator so it could have a varied amount of arguments or parameters for the function. And now I'm writing to the console just saving customer info, so we're kind of logging what is happening. And then we go ahead and return a function and pass those same args. Now let's go ahead and create another function that would happen maybe after we add the customer, and that would be to process their order. It has the same setup to begin with. It receives a function in the first parameter, and then there's another function here, and that has the args. Then it says we're processing the order, and notice we go ahead and reference the first argument out of the args here, and we go ahead and log that in the console. So processing order number, whatever it is. And then once again, we return a function and those arguments. And then the final function is to complete the order. Now notice it's defined with the keyword let instead of const, and you'll see why in a moment. But this complete order also receives the arguments, and in its console log statement, Notice I'm just using the args in an array here and calling two strings. So if there's more than one argument, we would see them all. But th there's really not much of a difference. I just wanted to show another way to display whatever's in the arguments. And there we have our complete order. So three functions that we want to happen in this precise order. Add customer, process order, let complete, or, or sorry, complete order defined with the let keyword. And then we go ahead and set complete order equal to process order 
and pass in the complete order as the first parameter, or, and that would be the function here in process order. Now notice we said we wanted add customer to be the first, and of course complete order would be the last. So complete order is the last function, but we're going in reverse order here from inside to out. And so if you think about nesting, we're nested all the way in and we're crawling back up the staircase out of the nested functions. So we first use process order and pass in complete order. And then let's go ahead and log this much to the console, I guess. We'll log complete order and see what it looks like now. You can see it's an anonymous function receiving the arguments and here's the processing order and it returns the function args. So we're almost there. Now, let's go ahead and finish. We'll set complete order equal to add customer and pass in complete order. And so once again, we've climbed up that staircase of nested functions and it's in reverse order because we wanted add customer to happen first. And now we'll go ahead and call complete order and pass in the order number 1000. And you can see in the console, we get saving customer info, which comes from add customer. Then we get processing order number 1000, which comes from process order. And finally, we get order number 1000 completed from the complete order. And if this looks a little familiar, that's because you may have watched my decorator functions tutorial. And this is very much like that. However, we are currying these functions here where there's a call that receives a function, and you can see that happens here. But then the function doesn't complete until it receives the second parameter, and those are the arguments. And so these are curried functions that are partials. So first we call it, and it receives just the first parameter, the function, and then the next time it receives the argument as that passes through the chain of functions. Now, if that seems confusing, let's take a look at what I was talking about. If these functions were written in a more standard way, this is what you would see. And this is what I meant by climbing the staircase out of each function. So complete order is the last function or it's nested in all the way here. And then we climb up to process order and finally up to add customer. So when we applied them above, we had to start from the inside and work our way out to the top or up this nested staircase, if you will. Here's the most advanced part of today's tutorial. Now this is a function called curry and it will accept any standard written function that receives more than one parameter and it will return that function as a curried function. And I'll show you an example of that. Now this does require you passing in a function that has a fixed number of parameters. So you couldn't pass in one that has an unknown number of parameters using the spread operator with args or params or whatever you wanted to call the params that were passed in. So we'll use this example at, when I show it. Of course, I'll give one with a fixed number of parameters. Let's first walk through this function just a little bit. And it receives a function. And so this outer function here, curry, is a wrapper because it returns another function named curried, which receives arguments with the spread operator. And here it compares the function length, so whatever the original function received for parameters. So let's say three, we pass in a function that expects three parameters. That's going to be reflected here with the length property of the function. But the arguments will increase every time. So the first time that uh, rolls through here, it would just be one, and the next time two, and finally they would be equal with three. So if they're not equal, it's going to return curried, and we call bind here, so this creates a new function, and we pass the args through. So bind creates a new function, and that function then comes back around. But if not, if eventually they're all equal, the parameters, then it gets three. Now let's go ahead and look at an example because I know this could be confusing. So I've got a typical function expression here. I've just got total and it receives three parameters, x, y, and z, and then it just adds them all together for the total. 
And then I'm going to set my curried total equal to curry and pass in the total function from above. And then let's go ahead and log curried total. And it needs to have all three parameters received before it, of course, gives us something, or it would just return a function telling us what was still needed. So let's save that. And you can see it gives me the number 60. So 10 plus 20 is 30 plus 30 is 60. It does a great job for what it's supposed to do. So let's break down the curry function just so you understand it a little better. First, I'm going to log to the console the function length when this is called. And you'll see how many times this logs to the console, first of all. It just logs once and we get three. So the length of the uh, function parameters, x, y, and z, is three. And that's what we expect. So we only see this part of the code once. So it's a wrapper and it's passing that function in and then it's returning curried right here. So now if we were to log the function length inside this return function curried, let's see how many times we see it in the console. Now we get it three times, once for each parameter, essentially. And let's go ahead and change this to args.length so you can see what I mean. Now instead of three, 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 we get one, two, three. So args increments or increases each time it's passed until it finally, of course, equals three. And that's when it equals the function uh, parameters length and then it just returns the function with the arguments here which is what we would expect at the very end. So now that we've confirmed all of that we know that we're calling the new function with the args right here. So let's see what the args are. At this point or we're creating a new function each time. So let's see how many times this shows in the console. And you can see the first time it's 10, and then it's 10 and 20. And of course, the last time it doesn't make it into this if statement, it's down here when it's 10, 20, and 30. When we have all three parameters, the function is called. Until then, it creates the new function each time with the arguments that it has. I hope that helps you understand the curry function. It's a little easier to understand how to call curried functions and even how to apply partials than it is to understand how to make a function called curry that will curry other functions. But I did want to include this even though it may be a little complicated. I welcome your questions and comments below. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and helping my channel grow. And I'll talk to you guys again very soon.